Good morning. Good morning, everybody. It's a soggy kind of gray day, but thank you for joining us. Actually, this is the kind of perfect day to have a virtual event because you don't necessarily need to get outside with your umbrella. You can just uh, simply join us. So thank you for being here. For those of you who don't know me, I am Lori Wheeler. I'm the Director of Member Engagement for Tech Manitoba. And uh, Tech Manitoba is a nonprofit organization that represents about 200 companies from little wee feisty startups to great big organizations like uh, Canada Life and RBC and everything in between. So um, I, I'm really happy to introduce today an interesting topic it's the changing face of digital collaboration, working together to shape the future of cities. And our presenter is Desiree Carter, Director of IoT Smart Cities from Rogers for Business. In the spirit of reconciliation, I'd like to acknowledge that we are gathered on the ancestral lands of Treaty One territory. And this is the traditional lands of Anishinaabe, Cree, OJ Cree, Dakota, Dene, and the homeland of the Red River Métis people. Tech Manitoba continually seeks to better our connections and our relationship with Indigenous communities. I also want to give a, an acknowledgement and a shout out to our sponsors. Love shouting out to our sponsors because I'm really proud that they're all Tech Manitoba members who have supported this Tech Manitoba or this Tech Mashup series. For the whole all of 2022, uh, MITT, NTT Data, and Online Business Systems. So thanks to all of you, and um, we appreciate your ongoing support. Um, we have a fabulous community in this uh, tech ecosystem, and those three are always um, great participants, not just financially, but but with uh, content and and um, support of um, of our mentorship programs. I'd like to introduce our speaker. And uh, I'm actually really jazzed to introduce Desiree Carter because she is she has such a depth of experience. Um, disruption, innovation, and digital transformation are all reshaping how cities are engaging with their communities. Desiree has over 20 years of experience working in the international marketplace as a consultant and a strategist. She helps organizations and governments adapt innovation modernizing their existing platforms to build safer cities and sustainable environments, all while using technology and data purposefully to make better decisions and drive economic growth to deliver a better quality of life. So before I invite Desiree on stage, I want to let you know that up in the top right corner, you can see a Q and A. Feel free to drop any questions that you have for Desiree into that Q and A. I'll grab them once she's done and read them back to the group. And also, if somebody adds a question, you can upvote it. If you want to make sure that that question gets answered, just click it and upvote it. So um, Desiree, why don't you put on your camera, put on your mic, and join me on stage. Desiree is triple booked today. <laughs> We're very happy that she is here because I know she's a very busy individual and uh, I think she's squeezing us in between conferences. So there she is. Uh, nice to see you, Desiree. I'm gonna drop off stage and I will turn it over to you. Thank you very much. And, and thank you for joining me today. I'm gonna share a quick video and then we'll get into our conversation. So one second, bear with me. Today's cities offer their residents a host of comforts and conveniences, from restaurants and shopping to sports and theaters. It's no wonder that urban areas are growing. But with growth come challenges. More cars on the street mean more gridlock. More people put more stress on infrastructure. 
and the question of how to make cities more sustainable has become more important than ever. Leveraging connected data and combining it with artificial intelligence, smart technologies promise to help us solve many of today's challenges while preparing cities for a resilient future. Solutions are designed to drive efficiencies that range from automating manual tasks to reducing waste to predictive maintenance that identifies and resolves problems before they start. Smart energy solutions help accomplish this by monitoring how we actually use buildings and infrastructure, saving emissions and energy costs. Smart waste and water solutions monitor pipes and water mains. When the water flow system detects an issue, even if it is underground and out of view, a repair crew can investigate before the issue leads to flooding. This helps prevent expensive property damage. Digitized infrastructure, such as connected stoplights, help control reducing our commute times. Safety is also improved as smart traffic lights can adapt to emergency vehicles and situations. Smart parking solutions help reduce the time spent searching for a parking space. This reduces congestion while optimizing the use of spaces, which in turn helps maximize the value of a city's parking assets. Smart transit solutions provide greater accessibility and also help improve traffic flow. Together, these solutions both lower emissions thanks to reduced congestion and make the city safer and easier to navigate. Smart solutions can help our public spaces and amenities function efficiently, responding smoothly to the needs of the community while wasting less energy and water. As individuals enjoy convenient benefits like online registration and payment portals for municipal services. Smart technologies can also enable improved community health care with expanded options for remote care. Taken as a whole, these solutions help increase the engagement of citizens by enhancing our lifestyles, health, and well-being. Rogers has the experience and expertise to help make your city smarter, bringing people closer to their communities and making cities more resilient in a changing world. So thank you for having me today. And, um, you know, this is a very interesting topic of smart cities, smart communities, smart spaces in any sort of way. So one thing I want to say is like we, we live in a profound time of change, a change that has forced governments and businesses to transform the way they act. The Internet of Things, or IoT as many people call it, thrived, allowing us to uh, do things we've never thought possible before. So IoT is about extending the internet beyond smartphones and computers to a whole range of things like smart sensors from fitness devices, restaurants to cars, from sustainability, emissions and energy to efficiency of intelligent buildings to the entire smart cities and smart communities, as I said before. So today, millions of IoT devices collecting billions of data our um, data and records are enabling faster decision and making decision making um, with greater accuracy. So, what makes a city smart? As you see on this screen, the evolution of smart cities. So, in 1999, it was really technology driven, and it was given by IBM and Cisco and a lot of the large um, technology companies. And a lot of people never understood how it would help us as we move forward. In 2014, you see that version two came out and that was then led by government. And government being that they realized that just simple um, driver's license registration or OHIP cards, anything to that extent, um, it has enabled us um, for, to, to leverage um, opportunities from that sense. And then 2017, things start to shift a little bit. Technology, as you know, um, there's a disruption every 10 years and, and, and it's moving faster as we know today. So, and it's one thing that has happened is that they realize that both private sector, citizens and businesses have to, and public sector obviously have to come together and leverage their expertise in order to drive solutions in a different way. So one thing, you know, people ask, what makes a city smart? So one thing that we know is that governments and businesses have told us that during the period of uncertainty, IoT lights the way. Um, it keeps things going even when the world was paused for the past couple of years. Keeping people, services, and goods connected even when we're physically apart. 
IoT users are already reaping the rewards in various sectors like government, health, energy, and manufacturing and agriculture. Organizations are moving into automation and they are showing a significant boost in revenue. So governments and businesses are building their resilience, learning to adapt, evolve, and meeting citizen needs um, in new ways. But one thing should be kept in mind, connected communities, connected cities, smart cities start with people. It is not only about using or installing digital interfaces in traditional infrastructure or streamlining operations. It's also about using technology and data purposefully to make better decisions and to deliver a better quality of life. So I'm gonna give you a couple of scenarios of real world scenarios that are happening today. Some are with uh, Rogers and some are with international organizations that I've worked with over the past few years. So imagine taking a road trip and seeing information about what's around you and what's up ahead displayed on your windshield. Sensors and smart highways sending real-time data to your car, all while warning of things like broken water mains or accidents or intelligently routing traffic and updating road signs or smart parking lots. That's, how you, that's when you know how many spaces are open and where they are. So you can reserve a space long before you get to your destination. Or using your integrated transit app to order an on-demand transit at your local bus stop, all arriving where you want to go faster and safer. Imagine a building operator, the indoor air quality of a building to, ma to maintenance required in a smart washroom on the fifth floor to a potential uh, water leak. Um, instantly. These insights give holistic look to make sensitive, time-sensitive decisions, react quickly to change, and to call for assistance. It helps to safeguard the well-being of your tenants and the employees and enables an operator to better control cost. Now, on a more serious note, imagine a firefighter in a smoke-filled home with little to no visibility with 5G augmented reality displayed on their helmets through a connected worker, they can see where their colleagues are. They can see the floor plan and the layout the, of the home or wherever the building that they're entering, where there are exits, pictures and descriptions of people they're working to rescue can appear on their, on their um, helmets. Imagine those people were rescued or injured and the paramedics could consult with trauma experts at a local hospital in real time and send data on vital signs or their actual location um, of the vehicle that is being transported, such as an ambulance. The ambulance ride, will they will know at the hospital what time um, to expect the ambulance or a time of arrival and how to manage what, what the patient's condition is and what they would get at that point in time. So how about some fun stuff? Imagine a ski lesson and your instructor gives you a specific path on Banff's notorious hills. See the path in your 5G ski goggles, the sensors in your clothes measure your movements and show you how to improve in real time. All of these examples are real world innovation that is happening today with governments, tech leaders, business leaders, and with Rogers telcos as well. So we know, um, you know, there are investments that Canada really needs to make. And with that being said, the federal and provincial governments are investing in highly in, in a few key areas, mobility on a whole, uh, EV, so electric vehicle technology, and by 2035, only EV vehicles can be produced to reduce a zero, to zero emissions. Federal governments have launched investing um, in Canada infrastructure where there is 33 build billion dollars in funding available to provinces and municipalities following areas of public sector, sorry, public transit, green investments, and community and culture such as housing and safety. And then there's a net zero accelerator where there is $8 billion to support any innovation project in municipalities that goes towards increasing or improving GHG emissions. Now there's a lot of things here. So it's about how to access these fundings as we go forth in the future. So one thing that we can say is the, 
you know, the future city trends um, are the most important thing to drive digital strategy. So it's about customer experience or that customer journey, the digital uh, capabilities such as operation and predictive maintenance, um, returns to not only investment, but returns to innovation. How is this helping um, to improve the transition of smart cities? By collaborating with technology leaders. <clears throat> There, we're seeing that, you know, there are many, you know, trends within smart cities, such as technological provisions of operation improvements and cost management that way. Water sustainability, air quality, energy transition and renewables, ESG performances based on the quality of living. One thing that we can say is that, you know, our population is growing. And one thing we know that what sustainability and studies from IDC have shown is by 2050, almost 70% of global pop of the global population is expected to live in urban areas or that's Emissions. Leaky and broken water pipes lead to an average of 10 to 15 percent of water loss and sustainable investments for solutions. What you also know is that transit has been hit in many different areas. With the investment pandemic, we see that the impacts of COVID have hit transit in public in public transit, any mode of transportation in itself. So the federal government is definitely willing to invest 2.6 start and safe restart programs. That's 1.6 billion there, and also another billion dollars with regards to help the. Uh, there is two to four cents, or two a stay on every dollar, two two to four cents on every dollar that, that from the gas. government sees. As I said, that transit is one of those things. Whether you're a pedestrian, it's bus, railway, subways, so citizens control over their time, their work, and their well-being. So create opportunities with um, universities at Rock autonomous vehicles and transportation management. We've been working closely. Uh, if you want to pan in, you can see uh, if you click on the right screen in the blue area that Rogers and Baltimore, we're building a whole um, a whole mini city of connected transit and transportation that works through very groups of concepts. And many things have come out of that just to gain that data to improve, as I said earlier, as on-demand transit. So waste, did you know that Canada is the largest producer of waste in the world with resources uh, made from um, traffic incidents in Canada cause 155,000 um, injuries a year with 10,000 fatalities. Traffic congestion costs Canada an estimated 30% of congestion in crowded urban areas and billions of dollars in lost revenues for street parking assets. So, you know, we talk about all of the things that we can do, but we, we admit there are some structure requires investment and introduction of advanced technologies such as 5G and integrated solutions to help and meet the increasing data consumption with the Canadian mobile traffic grew 42% in 2019 and this growth long, uh, long-term tr trend um, and has obviously been accelerated by COVID structures as we expand. Connected devices, there have been more than 33 million wireless subscribers in Canada in 2019. It is expected by a million network devices on our networks. And then that next generation infrastructure, interlinking wide local personal access to 5G, cloud, edge computing, software, uh, defined networking, and network um, video virtualization on-premises connection. Although we require investments, um, these technologies will act as operational enablers of new applications and devices, ecosystems, and experimental types of data processes and analytics from a power overseas. I was in the field of emerging um, technologies and emerging businesses. One thing is to have to be different positions, different opportunities, different networking capabilities. As the technology increases, as I said, disruptors, the next five years, it will go to the next stage of, of industry 5.0. So we have to be sure that we are equipped and have the infrastructure across it. What's so exciting is there's so much unknown. Our challenges as an industry is set, you know, setting the foundation for all of the amazing solutions that will, will be discovered. One thing that is so interesting about the position I'm in is I see all kinds of, of um, solutions being brought to the, their expertise as engineers and developers and take what we do best, and that's connectivity and connecting networks and bring it as fluid as possible. So it's not economically feasible for one provider to build this alone. So we must do this together are building ecosystems with many leading institutions. And if we're being a part of this ecosystem, it the ecosystem with different entities. So to increase to common good, and it's for the common good, as we say. We work hard to build relationships with thought leaders, think tanks, and others in the forum, which is an international forum, and we're the only tel telco that is a part of this, talking around the world a little faster than the Canadian marketplace because we're a little more conservative, but that doesn't mean that we can, it couldn't forms such as these at Manitoba. We're definitely interested in expanding our network to meet the needs. So here, I'm just going to give you like a quick overview of what we're seeing within smart cities. And we see incredible innovative mobility, as you see here. So these verticals, which I'm just going to show, give up, and it is in full use in our daily lives and operations. Canadian cities are um, learning quality and all of these things listed here uh, to integrate the best approach by evaluating best or um, government engagement, reduce environmental footprints, effective data, and economic opportunities, 
no matter what the smart city is, you're seeing that these are things in uh, maybe about a number of slides ago with the trends that are happening. These are just really great wide range. As I said, it is dealing with people, it's dealing with things, it's dealing with buildings, prioritize it. It needs an ecosystem to support it, including companies like us, I'm going to say Roger, us and their asset safe. We work together and we need to work together. Whether they are small, medium, or large, else, you know, they'll be left behind to do everything at once. You can do it by a phased approach, and we do that as well. So when we the city, who needs to initiate? Uh, what do you need to develop it and enable? Whether it is tapping into some of those cost structures and the Canadian communities. There are a couple other things that I don't necessarily have slides to municipalities, but we do this from a business. So we have many properties around um, and we uh, utilize a lot of our solution partners we have um, run proof of concepts that are implemented in some of our data centers across the Canadian marketplace. In, in addition, we have a campus in parking only for space. We have about two or three phases where we've implemented it to help people with through digital signage book or find money, especially when you live in a little bit more populated areas where you've been Technologies and different uh, associations such as OVEN, which is, you know, really the stream of uh, transportation or community tech, which also deals with some transportation, but with the health sector. Um, these are areas that we know um, information that is safe um, and secure across various platforms. And, you know, at Rogers as well, we have an, um, our who don't have access to connectivity. We have supplied them enable them with um, technology as iPads, tab tablets, or anything like that sent, so they can access things, whether it is studies, whether it is communicate with family members, because we know it has played a mental toll on many of the people. To your government, or whatever, what are your next steps? Now, it's how the Internet of Things is going to connect us as we move forward and unlock it, as we say, things that can help our daily lives. The next part is discover. There's so many things going right our solution partners we leverage um, our partnerships we have a, a large partnership with education um, you know a lot of people use teams on their networks whatever it might be but it's going to have make things a little bit easier instead of having your mobile phone which i hear a team's connection number a landline everything will run through one platform and that's for this year we are also launching um you know uh, a a patient remote patient platform um industry experts hospitals doctors and if they can get people who are able to utilize and send you know their vital signs um, from home from their long-term care facility, coming back to their physician in those places we're not saying we're trying to be the doctor or the physicians what we do best is connected to wireless private networks where it is a network where it is maybe secured for a specific hospital a specific institution wherever it wants to be so what we do is in this collaboration effort is the structures moving forward so one thing, if there's anything that you take from this conversation here, is that collaboration is needed in order to move forward. Um, and businesses, governments, technology experts have definitely understood this, and they understand the fact that we want city. And remember, a city could be anything. It could be a resort community. It can be a uh, university, a college campus. It can be an airport, a small airport, airport and it could be all the things that we want it to be. One thing we're seeing increasing is within the First Nations communities is that the increased activity and technology as we expand. Um, there is the, the merger going on between Rogers and Shaw. And this is looking at ending our network capability as we move forward and increase, uh, um, you know, viable, whether you are four or five hours from the city, eight hours from a main upper center or right in the city core. So one thing that governments need to do is evaluate their city needs. What is it that is more important to your citizens? Then you need to decide where to start. And identify your top challenges, whether it's population growth, transportation, or operations, how to make things a lot more efficient. But no matter what a smart city prioritizes, it needs ecosystem to support it. So including companies like us, where we live, that's why we need to work together. If you have a project, and I'll put it out there, if you project that you are, are passionate and interested within your city or municipality, we look for opportunities to build proof of concepts. Now, are they totally? No, not necessarily, but we can always work together to the application with your, with your cities and municipalities. So we support innovation to help cities um, by introducing services that help reduce barriers, access multiple networks such as 4G, 5G, LTE, and NBIOT. That sounds like a lot of different things, making it wherever you are, no matter if you're in the Canadian marketplace or you're traveling international, you have connectivity if you choose to uh, use your, um, your your device. Access is highly built in network and architects and ecosystems with partners. This is key to help cities <coughs> sorry, deploy their IoT solutions tools and platforms so we see incredible innovation across all verticals and there's enormous amount of opportunity as we move this monitoring and management to complete and full automation so if you want to find more um, information about iot on a whole uh, just visit our smart cities i believe the um 
the chat as well there. You can see services, as I said, for all areas of, of the business. So one thing I will say is <clears throat> the only place we can start, my team especially, we go into a lot of municipalities. And as I said, we just do workshops with a wide range from innovation teams, economic development, um, CIOs, whatever it might be, because everyone's at a different place. And we bring in our solution partners to uh, also give um, trends and interest in um, challenges and, you know, just kind of evaluate. So one thing I want to is if we continue now, sorry, if we continue to move forward, we just get from where we are, which is smart, piece together. Thank you. Thank you. That was super interesting. And you know, I, ha I have a cousin who's a firefighter, and one of the things he's spoken about is sometimes when they're in a smoke filled, like it's really hard to be oriented in this notion of having a visual right on their masks all the way to the hospital. That's very exciting. So um, thank you for that. Super interesting. Uh, one thing I also want to just say before I leave, um, or before we jump into questions, is when we go to networking on the floor, I just wanted to let you know that um, there's links to our sponsor, so you'll see the sponsor logo. So we've got actually quite a lot of questions. Um, somebody's going to put you on the spot, I don't know, but let's, uh, let's see what you say. Which Canadian cities do you see taking the lead in becoming a smart city? Um, you know, there are a couple of different things that um, we see from a Canadian Quebec region, I must say, is actually taking the lead in innovating innovative smart solutions in various municipalities, whether it is Quebec City, to Brochard, to, um, to Montreal itself. Um, they um, are um, open to um, those innovative projects and create some sort of funding, whether it is as a city tapping into some of those federal or provincial funding, or um, the municipality takes it in as a focus themselves. So one thing we want to say is that say is that Winnipeg region on a whole, we've been a lot of discussions with um, uh, more of the First Nations communities, I must say. Um, they have um, made smart city, and they've obviously been doing some federal thing um, from, from help just to improve their areas, just simple things like water management into areas that are coming mm -hmm. to, and I believe there is a little house specifically, um, and they're building out a hospital there where we're bringing interventions as well that will help with health specifically. So Winnipeg, yes, uh, Winnipeg areas out there are definitely also seeing, I'm actually sure what it is, I don't know if it's the government structure itself, but sometimes you just need a leader in those specific areas to say, yes, this is a priority and we don't want to be. Yeah, good. So you got some of Winnipeg's priorities. So it sounds like First Nations is one of the priorities here. Are there any others that you're aware of that we should be on, um, on the lookout for in terms of them being new? So one thing we have been in discussion with is water and wastewater management. It seems okay. to be a lot. Um, there's some areas that occur with have some issues. Um, yeah. So with that being said, they um, have brought us in to kind of understand what solutions that have to attack these problems. Because as I mentioned earlier, and, uh, water is elements out there, but our aging infrastructure is definitely causing, um, you know, burst pipes, uh, flooding of streets, whatever it might be. So I know Winnipeg specifically for the water and waste management is one of their priorities. There, There's a list, but I'm getting, I don't want to confuse with other cities that we've also been researching. I can keep true to the water and waste water management. Yeah. 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 Unfortunately, there's a lot of, um, there's too much water right now. And uh, there's a lot of these claims that are going through right now. People have wet basements, that's not the thing. But yeah, there's a lot of water that's to be dealt with right now. 5G arranging thousand. Is the plan to have towers on every building? So that is really a, a question for our network team. But what I do know is that it's not necessarily towers on every building. There could be utilizing your um, existing lighting infrastructure that can house um, many, let's just say many connectivity waves. So every lighting structure extends your broadband or your region further. The plan would be definitely have towers that give you a longer route. But if you have those places that are a little bit harder to get to, um, street lighting is also another alternative where they use an IoT perspective to um, extend uh, connectivity. So hopefully that answers the question. Yeah, interesting. You touched a little bit on remote communities because when you speak of 5G, right. still in Canada, that's the minority of geography. Mm -hmm. So um, what do you see happening in terms of improved accessibility for regions, for rural uh, municipalities? So one of the mandates by the federal government are to extend connectivity into the rural regions. So that is that is being worked on, and I can affirm that Rogers has already increased some of the connectivity into the rural regions. It is something that component because the money is there. The federal government has said this is what we need to, and I know Rogers and our competitors well. That is definitely a plan. But um, like for example, for building is it uh, a light rail transit by my house, and um, and it's through our provincial government. And admit it, it's going to take 30 years until it's completed. I, I nearly fell off my seat. I was like, first of all, they did that on the news. Right. <laughs> so, but they said it really quickly. All 30 years, right. I can never, like anything. But we're not looking at a 30-year plan. It's just more or less um, 
we, through our wireless project networks and activity, utilizing um, some of the mining mines um, in say, more in-depth areas. So with that, we can add additional connectivity on top of that. So it might not be a tower in your specific area, it might not be lighting uh, based on uh, the specific infrastructure, but there's definitely other solutions being put out there, whether it is um, Spectrum or wireless networks to definitely extend it into rural communities. And I do know that is a already for all three big telcos and all four for the, the federal government yeah. to, to create that. We have such attendants, our attendees, I have to say, like our members, smart members are asking smart questions. So if uh, if you have another question to be answered, please put it out there. But uh, here's a good one. It's more specifically to you personally okay. in terms of are there great resources, podcasts, newsletters we could access yeah. that speak about innovation or IoT? And uh, how do you stay on top of um all the changes that are happening so there are there's a lot of information um one thing i would say like the gartner reports are really good it talks mm. about smart cities um you know i'm a former consultant so like a lot of the um Deloitte's, the PwC's, the KPMG's, they kind of really good reports on smart cities. From a podcast perspective, there's not, I wouldn't say that there's various communities, smart cities or global smart cities, um, which is an international, but they do everything. They have people from around the world speaking. Just Google them, look them up. I get their newsletters as well as things and I'm a researcher at heart that that I, yeah. I, I went to school for law. I don't practice law anymore, but I went to school for law. And the thing about it is I'm about getting information. And so the best way is always keep abreast of things that are going on. I'll give you a, a this is more of a personal and has nothing to do with technology. Um, my um, my family is a big sports family. I am not. I will go to the various games and I am looking at all around, not at the, <laughs> at the court or at the, on the field. I'm looking at, Oh, look, look at that signage. Look at that. Um, you know, look at that uh, video surveillance there. Look at that. So I always pay attention to what's around me. And sometimes when you don't know, you just kind of look at signs and Google, Google is, could be your friend. Um, but there are so many innovations, podcasts, just type in smart cities or information about smart cities. Another thing is connecting with your government. Each uh, government institution, wherever you live, they usually have um, news releases that they put out and you can put in keywords and RS feeds. So I get that and it comes to my email every single day. Um, of what's happening from a local perspective as well as an international perspective. Um, for me, I've worked um, probably the past seven years in, in between Germany and London and seeing the innovation that's happened there. And yes, they're a lot further ahead when it comes to adaptation of technology, but they started out where we are too. Um, they have rule. We, we are very different in landscape. We have a very big country when it comes to landscape right so yes. that is something that we have to definitely understand and see how we can make connectivity a little bit easier for people um, the only place we're going is either to the u.s or mexico by land uh, mm -hmm. when you're in europe you know you can go to so many countries by land and so some of them have partnerships together um, co-partnerships to use connectivity and iot solutions to connect off of which we do here in with with different agreements with the US really. Yeah, interesting. Thanks to Tim Wildman uh, from NTT Data. And again, one of our most loyal uh, attendees. We always appreciate you coming, Tim. He's put a check out Bill ba Baver, Baver, I believe is how it's said, uh, and his podcast. Looks like he's got a great podcast about Good. Uh, innovation. Yeah, you know what? Join networks. That's all I say. Networking yeah. is one of your friends. I know it's been hard, especially being online for the past couple of years, but I also have very grown children and they're in their, um, you know, in their fields of, of, of specialties. And I say the best way to find out information is to join various networks because you're always learning. Um, I've been working, you know, a very long time and I'm always learning. I always like going to uh, various sessions. So many things are free online now just because of COVID that you can attend. And even if you're local boards of trades as well, and it, you know, Tech Manitoba as well, they bring in 
very good speakers, but find out what's um, relevant to you specifically for your region. Or if you want to expand it, uh, you can go international as well. Yeah, that, that's great. And we appreciate Rogers Communications, Rogers for Business. Rogers Communications is a Tech Manitoba member. And you're right, it's, you know, this is a free event and uh, right. it's a great way to make connections. Right. So I'm just going to go to the, our last question. And it looks like okay. somebody's maybe looking at, at seeing if there's a possibility for partnerships. Um, is Rogers for Business looking for partnerships with organizations in the tech industry in Manitoba regarding smart cities? So or you know what, what? How, how might somebody go about getting visibility to Rogers? Put it like this. As I said, we have our website that you need to go to. But okay. my email address is Desiree, D-E-S-I-R-E-E -E -E dot Carter. It's a very long email address. At well, we'll put it in the RCI chat. Yeah. dot yeah. Rogers dot com. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. If there are opportunities, um, and and I do travel, so I, I beg you some sort of uh, leeway when when it comes to a response. But with that being said, um, I have great product managers on our team, and if it if it is something that is you know fits our ecosystem, our portfolio that we're looking to grow because, you know, we have different plans for 2022, 2023. I'm going into planning season um, just now for 2023. Yeah. So as I said, there's always opportunities. And if it doesn't fit right now, sometimes we um, have other teams, not necessarily smart cities. We have the 5G innovation lab. We have our co-creation partnerships that I mentioned earlier in the presentation. So if there are opportunities and it really does, it's a good marriage and fit between both people, or both organizations, then then definitely we're worth ex it's worth exploring. Yeah. Well, I loved that presentation. I found it fascinating because, like you said, this isn't like the Jetsons. This is nope. like here with us right now. So I think it's been really interesting to hear from you. Thank you. No and problem. I know you. Um, just so everybody knows that we will keep this platform open until shortly after one. Um, but before we jump over to, um, so anyways, I'll thank you, Desiree. No problem. And uh, we appreciate that you fit this in. And I know that you've got a lot of things on the go. So thank you to Rogers Communications, Rogers for Business, and you for being our presenter for today. No problem. And and I really hope people got some information out of it. Um, you know, when we attend some of these presentations, sometimes it look, hits a little closer to home. Um, but it, it's about showing you that technology is actually our friend and yes. it is it is not something that we need to be fearful of any anymore. Um, we have to be precautious and make sure, you know, privacy and security is always, you know, of utmost port, uh, port importance. But one thing I must say is just like innovation. If you are um, have children moving into different areas, um, I'm their jobs. 10 years from now have not even been created. There's going to be right. so much opportunity for right. the next generation. And that's why we definitely get a lot of those bright minds um, on our team or, or co-create. Um, or even with me, I like going to a lot of the universities and, and um, the, the colleges just to see the technology. And on a non-related note, Lori, I was on a presentation earlier today. I don't know if anyone has seen those um, robotic dogs that are always online. Has anyone, like, you know, um, and the Department of, of Justice in the U.S. are actually utilizing these robotic dogs now in implementation. And I was on a presentation of how we can implement it into our, and I honestly sat there. I was like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> so robotic dogs. Yes. Yes. So a lot of interesting things, let's just say. Yeah. Yeah. Fascinating. Um, okay. Well, thank you very much. Um, looks like another, here's a link to some of the work from NTT data there, that's in our chat. Thank, thank you. you. And then before uh, we go back to the networking floor, I just want to remind everybody about Disrupted Conference that's on September 29th. And it's really shaping up to be great. We're, our host is going to be Eleanor Kupsani. Anybody that was at our um, AGM um, saw what an amazing host Eleanor is. And uh, so she's back to host on uh, September 29th. And then uh, the city of Winnipeg has a really interesting level of transparency 
like very few cities are have ever been brave enough to do as it relates to diversity. So they're also going to be featured in our Tech for Good version of Disrupted in the fall. So um, please join us for that. We're going to have the link in the chat. And I think uh, Shailen's going to take us back to the networking floor. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Thank you, Desiree. Um, no safe travels. All right. And, thank um, you. Have a good rest of your week, everybody. You too. Bye-bye.